I'm Ed Feinstein, Senior Rabbi at Valley Beth Shalom in Encino, California. I'm on the faculty of the Ziegler Rabbinical School at the American Jewish University, the Wexter Heritage Foundation, and the Shalom Hartman Institute in Jerusalem. For many Jews, the prayer book is a strange territory. It's in a foreign language, and even if you read Hebrew, it's a strange idiom. It speaks in language we normally don't speak, and the act of prayer is so odd and weird. So think about the prayer book this way. Think about the prayer book as an art gallery. After all, what do you meet in an art gallery? We come and we stand in front of a portrait, a painting, and through the painting we can see the world as it looked through the eyes of one great sensitive soul, through the eyes of a Rembrandt or a Van Gogh or a Salvador Dali or an Andy Warhol or a Picasso. That's what we see in a gallery. And the prayer book is much the same way. Each one of the prayers is like a portrait, a painting hanging in a gallery. When we go through the prayer book, through a service, we're going through a gallery. You see, the Jewish people never created great visual art because the second commandment said, don't make images. And because we were a people that was always on the move, whatever we created had to be portable. We poured our aesthetic images into literary arts, and because we're a religious community, literary arts meant creating prayer. So to stand in front of the Shema Yisrael, or the Shema Esrei, or Aleinu, or Adon Olam, to stand in front of any of the prayers of the prayer book is as if we're standing in front of a portrait, looking at the world through the eyes of a poet. How do they see the world? Well, there are prayers much like Van Gogh's that are bright and colorful. And there are prayers like Rembrandt that are soft and subtle. And there are prayers that are abstract. And there are prayers that are expressionist and prayers that are impressionist. And the main thing is to stop and to look at the world through the eyes of that particular prayer. What has it come to teach us? And, and just like you can go through an art gallery very slowly and stand in front of every piece and spend minutes, even hours, understanding how that artist saw the world, you're allowed to pray that way. I know it might get your, your rabbi angry, but you don't have to turn to the next page when he says so or she says so. Stay on the page where you are and ask yourself, what is being shown? What would it be like to live in that world? And then other people like to run through galleries, you know. I once visited the Louvre and listened to a tour guide say to a group of American tourists, you have 20 minutes to see the Louvre. The winged victories on the fourth floor, Mona Lisa's on the third, and the bathrooms are in the, are in the basement. And there are people who pray that way. But in order to gain a sense of the depth and the power and the wisdom of this tradition, I think it's important to stand in front of every prayer as if it were the Mona Lisa. And try to figure out, what did this poet see? How was this poet touched? What were the experiences that this poet went through just before he or she created this particular expression that gives me a vision of what life can be, what the world can be, and who I can be? So what is the prayer book? The prayer book is the Jewish Louvre. It's a collection of the greatest perceptions of the world created by the greatest Jewish artists who ever lived and gathered, to, gathered for us together in one convenient place. It invites us to walk these hallways and to peer into these great souls and to find the truth that they found in their lives. Enjoy your gallery.